Okay, so we're on our second to last focus principle, which is called balance heart and mind. So here, the myth I would like to dispel is called the myth of thought. The myth of thought is, if I think hard enough about something, I'll find the solution. Right? The reality, in some cases, may be, if I stop thinking and allow myself to feel what is right for me, what is true for me, I'll find the solution. It's like, have you ever, um, for example, there's something bothering you, you think about it, think about it, think about it, and then like you say, okay, okay, I'm, I'm, you go out, go out to a concert or you go to see a movie or you go, you know, go hang out with a friend and just leave it. And then in the middle of the movie, the solution pops up. It's because you, 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 you stopped over focusing on your thinking. You let it go. And the mind has like these kind of like on the, on a, on a stove, the, the mind has these back burners that still operate. Um, even when the front burners are not operating, you let it go and still the solution can come because you allow yourself to feel. Um, also, another myth of thought is, I must pay attention to my thoughts. Well, you know, well, guess what? Studies have shown that we have over 60,000 thoughts in a single day. So it's kind of hard to pay attention to 60,000 thoughts. It's totally fine not to pay attention to some thoughts. Um, so, why is this important? Um, because two-thirds of MBAs at ESA change careers within two years of graduation. Many of us don't pay attention to our hearts. We, we, we pay attention to our minds. We pay attention to what we think with our minds we should do rather than what we feel in our hearts we want to do. The problem with that is that it's not sustainable. Eventually our feelings come back and, um, and if we don't feel right in what we're doing, then it's time for, for a change. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, occasionally in life, there are those moments of unutterable fulfillment which cannot be completely explained by those symbols called words. Their meanings can only be articulated by the inaudible language of the heart. Some of the best discoveries that have ever been, been made have come from paying attention to the heart. Einstein once said, I never came upon any of my discoveries through the process of rational thinking. Well, we got examples all around us still of how we, we, we focus on thinking rather than feeling and we go in the wrong direction. For example, the story of the MBA who turned down a job from a, from a venture capitalist and, and to work in a VC firm and breathed a sigh of relief and told people here in career services, oh, I'm so glad I didn't get that job because, because if I had gotten it, I would have had to take it. And it would have been like having a supermodel for a girlfriend. You know, who's like someone who, who, like, I feel like I have to stay with her as my girlfriend, but I don't really connect with her. I don't really love her. Right? That's really sad. You know, if you think about it, at this stage of human development in, in, in where we are in third millennium, and those of you watching this, if you're, you know, most likely, um, you've had a lot of benefits, a lot of privileges, a lot of advantages in your life that we have to, like, not enjoy what we do because of some, like, what our mind is saying we should do, which is often really not our mind at all. It's actually what we've inherited from our parents or from others. It's really what someone else thinks we should do, rather than what we deep in our heart and soul want to do. Well, the problem with that is, I guess, I give, to give you a visual, so imagine the worst class you ever had in your life. Hopefully it wasn't here, right? But wherever you were, imagine one of your worst classes ever. I'm talking about the class, the teacher or professor is so boring that you're watching the clock tick. You're watching the hand on the clock tick, 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 the minute hand, right? And you do that for the whole hour. Okay, so depending on which country you're in, you're going to work on average, if you're working full time, you're going to work between 1,800 and 2,000 2, hours per year, roughly. Okay, if we think about like 35, 40 hours a week, 45, 50 weeks, I don't know how you cut it, but it's going to end up being, let's say, between 1,700 and 2,000 hours per year. Take your age. Okay, so let's say, for example, that you're going to work another 40 years, ideally, in your life. Well, 
we're talking about another 75 to 80,000 or more hours that you're going to spend in your career working. So, imagine repeating that class where you're watching that minute hand tick, 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 tick for an hour. Imagine repeating that 75,000 times. What's that going to do to your soul? What's that going to do to you? This is why paying attention to the heart is very important. Paying attention to how we feel. But the mind is also important. As, uh, as Galileo, the 17th century Italian astronomer, once said, I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed me with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forego their use. So, of course, thoughts are also important. Um, it's the two in combination that can be very powerful. So, to help you in trying to focus on what's the right career, I want to offer you a strategy which I call the four P's of success as a way to unite heart and mind. All right, so the four P's, okay, the first P is passion. Passion is about your heart. It's about what do you feel good doing. So if you don't enjoy something, then it probably is not aligned with your passion. So passion means you enjoy the day-to-day -day responsibilities of whatever the career is that you're going to pursue. The next P is purpose. Purpose is about the greater mission you're going to work toward. Right? So this is about what do you want to change in the world? This is about like just forget about yourself for a moment and just imagine the world, your community, your country, the world. What makes you angry? about your community, about your country, about the world. What makes you angry and uncomfortable and makes you say, I want to change something about that. I want to feel this sense of convergence that it, at the end of my life, I've done something to change what I see to be wrong. That's purpose. That's mission. That's the second P. Okay, the third P is potential. Potential is kind of like the biblical parable about the talents that God would be angry if you didn't use the talents you were given. So yeah, you're very good at something. It's like actually Pascal again, uh, uh, Pascal again, he once said, all of us are something, none of us are everything. So we shouldn't try to be everything. We should focus on what we're really good at and do it really well. George Lucas, director of Star Wars, once said, and I really like this quote, a lot of people like to do certain things, but they're not that good at it. Keep going through the things you like to do until you find something that you actually seem to be extremely good at. Right? So what is your potential? What can you uniquely do better than anyone else where you can define your niche, something that you are extremely talented at? I promise you there is something and it is your challenge and task to find that thing and really focus on it. Okay. The last P is paycheck. So this is like your financial engine. It's okay that you want to support your family or that you want to have a decent lifestyle. So this is like your economic livelihood. Right? So these four P's together, the idea is that any career opportunity that you're considering falls somewhere in the union of these four P's. Okay, the union means it could be in just one of the P's, or it could be two, right? But the right career is going to be what falls into all four P's. Now, here it's very important to distinguish between passion and purpose. People sometimes get them confused. They're, they're different. Purpose, is again, is the overall mission. Passion is enjoying the day-to-day -day tasks. So, for example, let's suppose you say, you know, what I really love to do, what it, for me, um, what I really want to do is work with a, work with a software company. Okay, that's what I think. You know, you find a software company that's making people's lives easier. That's that's my pur the purpose I want to work toward. Well, it turns out you go work there for ten years and you hate your job. And why? Maybe you didn't think about your passion. Maybe your passion is in sales, and you want to be interacting with people and selling the software, not to be developing the software as a technical engineer. So you see there's different. The same, for example, perhaps the purpose is that you want to eradicate homelessness. So you want to go work and, and, and help people to be self-sufficient. Okay? 
but you didn't think about that your passion is not fundraising, but you became a fundraiser for a homeless organization. And after five years, you're like, what do I do? Why did I make the wrong choice? Maybe your passion was counseling homeless people. So and that's what you really enjoy, that day-to-day that -day interaction. Or the opposite, maybe your passion was to crunch the numbers and be working in finance for a homeless organization. Whatever it is, it's important to distinguish those two.